I have a very distinguished panel and they need no introduction. In case you want to know more about them, please read, it's all there for you. So I won't introduce them. The Right to Education Act, which guarantees elementary education to all children between 6 and 14 years, but my concern is the government be able to implement it. Why is my concern there? Because after 62 years of independence, where are we in education? 39% of Indians are illiterate, which is the same size as the population of the US. One, 15 out of 100 children will never go to any school. They'll never have a chance to enter the school. Those of 85 who enter, 50% will drop out by 5th standard. And of the 43 who have been to school, only 10% will finish 10th standard. Uh, so that means 4 out of 100 will finish 10th standard. Sorry. Given this picture, Will the government be able to implement this? Again, I am asking this question without volunteerism. And by volunteerism, I am defining as any private initiative, whether it's from the NGO, from an individual, or by corporates through their CSR activity. Uh, would any of my family members like to describe the scenario in education in India? Well, just to give you a little um, uh, background on this, after the right to education, uh, with the right, with the right to education bill have, having been passed, the the teacher requirement would be three million teachers, and and that's a huge uh, number, and I think to a certain extent this is where volunteers would just one second. Volunteers, <laughs> sorry, volunteerism will help, but at the same time, you know, one, one has to recognize the fact that teaching is a skilled profession, it's not everyone's cup of tea, and you have to have an aptitude to be able to teach, because to come down to the level of a child is something very few people can do. Also, there are other skills required like um, classroom management in discipline, being able to identify children who have um, uh, problems of disability, whether it's uh, attention disorder or, att or uh, hyperactive uh, syndrome and things like that. There's so many problems that we, running a school, we see in children, which, is, uh, which very few of the uh, uh, normal teachers are, tr uh, are able to identify. And I personally feel a lot of the dropouts that we hear of are those cases where the teacher just doesn't know anything about it. Our whole teacher curriculum is so poor, it was designed sometimes in 1892, which we are still following. There are total ab uh, uh, about 1,000 teaching institutes in India. And that also, you know, you can take only 30 to 40 people, uh, uh, students at one time to be able to teach. The new curriculum that has been formed is uh, a, four, it, it, a, a person has to spend four years to before they can get the degree. Even in the Right to Education Act, they have stipulated minimum qualifications. And I have seen, you know, the person may have all the requisites, de requisite degrees, but when it comes to, you know, asking the person, I mean, this is in, in the, during the interview process, I've seen that, they're not able to, uh, dis uh, you know, explain a concept and all, and that is where the whole, uh, uh, my concern when we talk about volunteerism lies, are you, will you be able to explain certain basic concepts to those children before you start teaching them? So your concern is that if we allow unqualified volunteers to teach, will they be able to give quality education? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have Anand, any examples where uh, not qualified teachers have done a better job 
than the trained teacher. Well, I think that um, there are many examples, even within, within India. Um, you know, volunteerism happens in many different ways already. It's, uh, you know, we were just speaking before we started this session about Babar Ali in West Bengal who goes home after his own education and has become a headmaster of his own school. There are many, many situations of schools in an unstructured form uh, across the country where people are giving their time. Not always have gone, have gone through some sort of significant qualification as a teacher. In the case of today, there are a number of programs that are beginning to get started. Many people have heard of Teach India, Teach for India, which is a similar program asking people to give larger amounts of time, up to two years as a teacher in a school, which actually gives you an opportunity to train teachers and make them prepared to be qualified as teachers in the classroom, though they may not be there as long as uh, you'd like. There's a Gandhi Fellowship, which is around getting students or graduates to spend two years helping headmasters in a, not a direct teaching role, but helping headmasters in rural government schools actually be able to, to implement plans of theirs um, educationally. In many cases, you've seen not directly trained people as t who've been trained as teachers, gone through a B.Ed., actually be able to go into school and teach concepts. And I think that the question here is about, you know, to add to Manju's concern, is about finding ways to actually prepare people to be teachers who come in as volunteers. In my opinion, if I were to, you know, before adding too much to this, and we can, uh, we can talk a bit more about this later in the conversation, one of the structural things we need to solve is lateral access to being able to enter schools as a volunteer. I, um, many people don't put much attention on this. It's not just about people waking up one fine day and saying, I'd like to, to spend some time in a school teaching a particular subject, but it's also about having opportunities that allow you to get into a school and teach a particular subject. And suppose you get excited by teaching that particular subject, opportunities that let you continue to engage with the education system as a teacher in a school, whether it's government or non-government, um, or to be able to, to end up being an administrator in schools, which is an, an aspect of the problem that I'd like to make sure we, we cover. Okay. And do I hear you say that more than regular training and degrees, if you have a passion, a commitment, and a will to pick up some skills, you could be a very good teacher as a volunteer. Absolutely. I think that that is very much the case. But one thing that uh, Manju mentioned I think is true. It doesn't, you don't need to be a nuclear scientist to teach sixth grade math. In fact, the level of skill required in math is not the only thing that's necessary for you to be a good teacher. And there's a, a large component to that is classroom management, understanding child psychology, a lot of pieces like that. But the first key, if, 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 if I'm a biologist and I want to be able to teach life sciences, is the desire to do so. That, that desire needs to be groomed in some sort of form uh, in order for people to be effective teachers. Just placing them in a school is not good enough. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rajan, do you think that volunteerism is the new way forward? What do you think? I would say, are you able to hear me? Okay. I would say that, uh, yes, it is one of the ways of going forward. We need multiple ones and one can't depend only on that alone. Uh, at this point, uh, I will strengthen what you said and what they have said. I want to give some numbers. Primary schools, because the dimension of Indian problem is, is to be understood, seven, pri seven lakh primary schools, 700,000 approximately, one can quibble on a little bit on numbers, around two and a half to three lakh upper primary. Basically, that is the one right to education, uh, elementary schools. So, in this, the teachers will be a huge component, three million, odd, three million odd. Now, where do you do volunteerism? In this, you have to be make it accessible to all. I see two great resources are being frittered away in this country. One is, because I know that I have been in the science and educational field, many women who get qualified, then they get displaced because of marriage, or because of uh, childbirth, etc. A, a fairly good amount of period, three, four years, is gone. Because there is a, the whole system, uh, we, we, in fact, we were uh, trying to evolve a system for them, but uh, it was not available. So, the whole set of people, highly qualified people, highly motivated, who know how to handle children. 
Another thing is, we, in, our, in our hype saying that we are a young country, we forget 60 plus who have retired. They are 110 million. Of which even if we assume 10 percent are good, yet every 5 million is getting added to it. There is a whole set of force which is available. Because you need people from diverse background, not merely in science and variety of it. Then as rightly pointed out, important thing is not to depend the trained word has now got equivalent to beard. And that is the biggest disaster for the country. For the regular education system, as well as anything volunteerism or anything. Those rules have to be relaxed. Okay, you continue those in some places, but the trained means you should have certain aptitude. Are you having an aptitude? And a little bit of touching. So if this is available, a lot of them will go. Second, we have a mindset problem. When we say volunteer, that person, she or he, he should give totally free, nothing will be given, even you have to come by your bus or your car, that cannot help. Because it has to be a quasi, that's why I said that voluntary word has to be defined. It has to be a quasi, somebody has to little bit fund them. And some resource, which may not be as good as a career, but reasonable enough to, so that their basic comforts are taken. Then that is where I will put the source of volunteerism. So this is one very important thing. This means the government, the civic society has asked for it. Please, for heaven's sake, relax. Don't go on it if it is two, three hours. Example, there are many schools, especially uh, various religious groups. They run it and then people do give them money. So th this is the, the, it is not unavailable. However, I, would, I want to point out one thing. In India, uh, funds availability for voluntary actions, in the way I, I defined it, Philanthropy has uh, started drying up post-independence India because philanthropy requires compassion. Unfortunately, the country, one other thing which takes away compassion and funds. One thing which takes away funds is an equal and parallel, starts in same C, rhymes very well and has ten words. You check, her, check on it. That one has taken away lot of public good funds available. This is one ad uh, issue we, we need to address. Are people ready to give at least some, even when they are giving to the second? Okay, 10% of it I will give for compassion, only for education. Let us not worry about anything else. Because as you rightly pointed out, we can't afford to have so many number of our children not even pass through uh, uh, this thing. So this is what it is. I will sure. add on uh, as it comes. You know, we run four municipal schools. And not all our teachers are B.A. and D.A. But they are excellent teachers because we've trained them. And one of the politicians came up to me and said, Mrs. Aga, if you are sick, would you let a veterinary uh, treat you? So I said, no. He said, similarly, our teachers should be, our students should be taught by trained teachers. Why should they be not trained? What do you think, Manju? Do you think he's right? Or a short-term training? course can be effective to make people like who are maybe retired or housewives who are willing to give their time can be trained. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, I think you it's okay, fine, thank you. Um, it, 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 it is possible and I disagree with this politician because a trained teacher doesn't mean that you are a good teacher. Uh, and, and in today's context, a teacher, apart from imparting education, is also a counselor, is uh, a nurturer. There's so many aspects to being a teacher, which um, I don't think is possible. You know, one of the areas which I feel we can help to volunteer, there are two areas where we can help to volunteer if you don't have the teaching skills, but uh, have, would want to do something towards education is teaching um, uh, the uh, the principal's administration uh, administrative uh, um, skills. skills because what is happening is uh, the teachers are promoted the normal government uh, policy is you pr keep promoting a uh, teacher and according to the seniority you become a principal 
And the result is that sometimes very good teachers are taken away from the job of teaching, but they are made to do administrative jobs which they have no idea of. So they, you know, fare very badly. The, uh, so you have to teach them basic accounting principles, basic administrative. There's so many areas which you have to keep on filling forms and sending information to the, di to the education department. The other area where um, uh, um, uh, yes, the other area where because government is spending huge amounts of money in in government-run schools, if that is used judiciously, I'm sure a, a lot a lot more children can benefit from that. And that itself, you know, if somebody can help to do audit of the way the government spends that money. It would be it would be a great uh, service to the nation. Uh -huh. uh, Anand, you did mention Teach for India and the principles thing through Parimperamal Foundation. Can you elaborate a little? I'd like you to elaborate sure. quite a lot. I, I think that it's important. It's important to recognize that yeah. Dr. Rajan's way of pointing out this problem. When you have four million teachers that you need. It's never going to be clear that finding 2,000 volunteers, 3,000 volunteers, or anything like that is really going to solve the teaching problem directly. I think it's, it's important as, to think about volunteerism as a tool not to directly solve a specific issue when, you know, which re results in someone saying, well, you're putting unqualified people into roles as teachers where you, you want to be you know, educated by a teacher. The reasons to think about volunteerism as a solution, and this is why things like Teach for India or the Gandhi Fellowship Program that the Paramo Foundation runs are important, is because it allows public engagement by private citizens. It allows public engagement with a very public issue in a public way. Right? Until now, we've looked at the channel of becoming an educator in a government school is exactly this. You become a teacher through a BEAD, you get a school appointment somewhere, they place you in a school in some place, they move you around every now and then, you get promoted, and you get promoted to a higher level and a higher level and a higher level and eventually you're a principal though you never have any training in it. The term of training or qualification actually is the BEAD. But if I as a, you know, mathematician that has solved lots of problems wants to become a math teacher in a school as a 30 year old, it's impossible. So the reasons that things like you know, Teach for India was started, and its, its solution may not be that it has an army of teachers that fills all of the needs of the teaching problem, but what it does is it allows young people who are interested in education as an issue to engage with their own body and ability as someone getting experience in a classroom as a teacher where it's needed. What does this do? A, it sends a signal to young people saying, hey, here's a problem that everybody recognizes, it's education. There is a way for you to engage, that is, you can become a teacher. We will make it possible for you to be a teacher, and you get placed in the school after getting some training. What else does it do? It says after these people have spent two years in a school, that 20 years from now, you will have 100 to 200 to 300 to 500 people per year who have spent significant amounts of time on the front lines of an issue, who are able to speak and act intelligently on an issue as important as education. The solutions to the education problem, the solutions to right to education, will come out of people whose original and first interaction with education was because they chose to take this route of volunteerism. And what will end up happening is these people will become business folks, they'll go into public office, they'll go into NGOs, they'll go into policy, and their entire obsession with public issues will have been seeded by this experience as a volunteer. That's the reason that you invest in volunteerism as an issue. And there's structural reasons to make that possible. And one of those, obviously, is making volunteerism more than, okay, you want to volunteer, you know, give everything give me your car, give me your money, and you spend your way here, you have to recognize that volunteerism means getting the kinds of people and resources that you would otherwise not be able to get through the normal channel. From 
people because of their compassion. I mean, that's what these 150 people that are, you know, 250 people that are now engaged with Teach for India, 40 people 87, engaged, right. Well, 87 now, but 150 this coming year who are going to be part of Teach for India. You know, 35 working in the Gandhi Fellowship, whatever it might be. Um, you know, the reason that they're there is because someone said, hey, here's an opportunity, your needs will be met, and you're working on an issue that's important to the country and important, you know, to the world. And that's enough to get this enormous resource that otherwise does not believe education is open to them to wake up and, and participate. And would I be correct in saying in that both these movements, you take the brightest graduates and professionals. You really have a tough selection process whereby the kind of teaching is a profession in schools where if you cannot get into anything, you become a teacher. Whereas here you are showing that the best can go into education. I, I think that that's part of the design of volunteer <coughs> programs is to, to give it a sense of prestige. When you're designing it, you, otherwise you, know, you end up with people who, who are talents that may be at par or below what you're able to get in a school. But you're in, the, per, the intention is to, is to crowdsource in the, the sort of new technology term of it, is to, to get from a a large number of people out in the world, you know, people who have an interest in what you care about, and ask them to, to almost explain why they want to do this, uh, and pick the talent that, that really is going to take the country or education sector forward. So it's, it's absolutely correct that these organizations, and almost all of them you know, around the globe that are similar to this, are, are organizations of immense prestige, where very, very highly talented people Will, will leave their jobs or they come out of the top schools in India or in other places of the world that, that want to do this. Mm -hmm. So Rajan, any other examples of effective volunteerism? Can you suggest something? See, I have seen, for example, Ramakrishna Mission schools. Uh, sorry. Uh, I have seen Ramakrishna Mission schools. There's, there is a lot of volunteerism there. The, the early beginnings of uh, DAV system I, which I have seen, there's a lot of money being given by private individuals. In fact, BHU itself came like that. Uh, AMU itself, Aligarh Muslim University also had that. So that's why I said, the beginning part of our post-independence India, these causes were considered very important. Now, relatively, such volunteerism comes only by religious groups, which have some command locally. They are in, uh, a lot of them are operating in Karnataka. I am aware of it. may be operating in other regions. So, it comes via that channel, but unfortunately I am not aware of formal professional corporate channels which are able to attract such ordinary, you know, they say somebody, some teacher, somebody who has been a teacher, the whole life saving his or hers is only 50,000 or 1 lakh. They put an endowment there. They put that money into schools. They say, I am giving it off. Such items are missing because why I am stressing these small items is we, the hugeness of the problem is not going to sub, get solved by few, uh, few big donations alone. It has to come all across to feel, okay, I gave 10,000, I gave here, I gave my part time into this, I work for this thing. This can happen, I think, one of the things has to be, we have to attack that item, everybody, I'm happy, everybody raised it, that the structure of who can be the volunteer and then go, oh, are you a B yet, are you coming there? And how many hours can you put five, six hours? May not be. Three hours. But the commitment cannot be just two hours and then say, give me a voluntary certificate. No. So, there are examples in the country which are positive. However, I would like that to come very high. That is why I said about the compassion. The other side of that other ten-letter word has to be demolished. So, even those who do that should say, okay, my consciousness, I keep something for this. 10% of it I keep. Manju, any uh, volunteerism, any way your schools have reached out to the underprivileged? Yes, um, Anu, what we've started doing is, or we've been doing is to have some extra teachers on our roads, or those teachers who want to opt out of regular t uh, teaching, the, uh, everyday teaching. Those te uh, teachers are now being sent to different parts of the country they, and, and, and been teaching the, uh, the teachers themselves. It's happened in Jammu and Kashmir, our teachers have gone, especially the higher secondary level, the, the science teachers have gone, English uh, teachers have gone to be able to explain the methodology to use to, be, to 
uh, to teach the children in a better way without because most of these schools are very poorly equipped. So how to use the local material to be able to teach the concepts. We've done it in slum areas. Recently what um, our foundation has done is to adopt 25 schools in Mewat area which is the, one of the poorest of um, um, areas in the country. And um, now what we these are government schools we've adopted. So our teachers are going to be going there and helping out with with the teachers. So for just now the process of winning the confidence of those teachers is what we are going through because we have to one has to win their confidence that yes, uh, we when we are coming in we are not like an elitist group or somebody coming for a short while, but we are going to be hand holding you, give, providing you some tools that would help you in delivering um, a lesson better. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the other reasons which I feel, we, uh, McKinsey did a survey recently of the schools run by Bharti's uh, group of uh, this, you know, they've set up 350 schools uh, over in the country, primary schools. And so, some of the things which they came up with, the McKinsey has said, that the dropout in schools is because a lot of the children feel that the education imparted to them is not relevant to their needs. And this is something which we've been talking to the government that to make a curriculum flexible and to make it more relevant to the local needs instead of, you know, talking to them about things which, is, which, to, is, which they can't understand and it's difficult to comprehend. And that was one of the reasons why, and the, of course, and multi-grade multi classes. Some people feel that, yes, uh, because of the shortage, multi-grade teaching is good. To a certain extent, yes, because the learning, the peer uh, learning is there. But at the same time, for a teacher to handle 200 children is next to impossible in one room. And these are the th areas, you know, where volunteers can ha help in be assisting those teachers in managing the large groups. Uh, my question is, we have so many people who could be potential volunteers. But what's coming in the way of volunteerism and is there any solution to it? Anyone? Anand? I think that the largest impediment to volunteerism is, is a, it's almost a, a psychological one that is societal, it's almost systemic. And I think that Dr. Rajan actually hit on one piece of this, which is this notion of philanthropy and compassion of, of giving has another side to it, which is, you know, what role do we play as institution builders, as as nation builders or something along those lines. I, I think that it, it, in a very crude analysis of where we are right now, so we had this sense that the nation building piece of what we're doing, whether it be schools or, you know, or energy or water, is the job of the system, this government. And you know, the job of private citizens was to be good private citizens. Um, because of that, we've systematically broken down this institution nation building nexus that let people feel like you know we should give back in the form of, of great schools or great universities or you know waterworks or uh, you know rainwater harvesting systems in our village or whatever it might be but there was a point in time where people believed that they were needed for the the system to work at its best that idea has it needs a renewal of some form. It's not a new how one. How did it die or how did it taper and why? Why? We've had that in India. Yes, Raju, you want to say? Unless you want to say how it died. No, I, I don't know how it died, but I, I will finish my thought. It's not died, I, I, but it's tapering. <laughs> it's tapering. I, I, I do think that it's become less significant, largely because the system has, one, never really admitted that it's broken. Right? We do sort of. In a skirty way, we talk about the statistics, we say whatever, but Nobody's going to say to you that my school sucks and my teachers need help and you know, that I'll take whoever can teach in my school because that's an admission of, of wherever. So one piece is that, and that's a systemic, you know, across the system issue. The second piece is we've never really believed that we can ask civil society to give to this in a complex form. You know, the, the ask is, 
please give your money so I can build these toilets, please give your money so I can buy a club computer, but nobody actually had the guts to say, give one year of your time, give two years of your time so that 35 kids understand this issue, are better, better human beings, better citizens of this country, and the nation moves forward. You're participating in a national cause. That request has not become systemic today. And I, I think that one big change that I would advocate for is that allow the system to say that. Saying, you know, we have this resource, which is our citizenship, our citizenry, who, who can and will and have the talent, resources, money, ability, desire to give to this issue. And if you want to, we'll create a roadmap by which you can, which is what volunteerism is about. Please. I will now. See, historically, if you look at post-independent India, anything public good became government. In addition to the, uh, even the economy has to be controlled, everything has to be controlled. So, anything to be done, good means it is government. Central government, state government, maybe occasionally a municipality, but that's all. When that got, and then the economy got liberal, it, that process has introduced a lot of things. That is the other ten words which I said it introduced it. But subsequently, when it opened out, only the economic reforms, opening up, investments, this sector has been seen. In the process, what has been lost is the, there is something called community action, which is what made Indian education great. If any one of you have read 18th, the beautiful tree, that is the 18th century, how the education is, that the one Dharmapali has done so much of work, it was all, lot of it was community action. The community resources and community action. That is why Indian education was good, even in the 18th century, where it has degraded quite a bit. So the community action is, when I mean community action, not national action. Community action has been lost. It has to be a lot of local decentralized level. Second, we have tried to put the national word. You are patriot, you are national means everything Delhi centric. So you are looking at it and then do, somebody does in Kohima, somebody does in Kanyakumari, it's lost. So everything is trying to compete in a space, either in Delhi or maybe Mumbai at the most. This causes a problem that all, all those, you know, even though all volunteers cannot be completely sannyasis or sannyasinis. Everybody has got a little bit, you know, I want to be recognized. There is a part of it, along with the self-esteem, there is also a little pride. So this part of it is now media also. It is only a national media, nothing will come local something has happened. So, this part of it we have to tackle. That is, we have more or less finished the socialist control, but there are lingerings there. The opening, opening, the forms, we find limits on it. Now, what we have to now emphasize in the coming years, all of you, in fact, uh, many of you have the role, because you will be heard, will be community action, even if you took at a local area, you do in a village, there are some five, uh, five, six municipal schools. Yes, it is as good. Look in a slum area, we are not talking about migrant children, children of migrant labor in India is, is so high a number, because if I start reeling statistics it will be, uh, sound very depressing. So these type of issues you do, it is also as prestigious as being a chief minister or being a corporate CEO or any such thing. This type of one, our community, that is why I said the mindset. This if it is generated, it was so pre-independent India. Community action was fine. Uh, you talked about the systemic change, you talked of mindset. Who's going to bring this change about? Who's going to do it for us? Do we expect government to do it? Who's going to do it? I mean, I, I'll take a stab at that. I, I think that it, it starts with anyone that wants to. I mean, we, we have already, I think the recent successes that we're seeing, whether it's things like Teach India, it's things like Teach for India, it's the Gandhi Fellows, or if you look even further back, a lot of the biggest educational institutions in the country started in volunteer movements. You know, even, even things like the, the midday meal scheme, and many of those run from largely volunteer effort. Um, the, the recognition needs to exist that there is a very strong latent desire within this generation particularly, but all generations, to do something. So the, the, the core fodder you need to actually feed something like this is a desire. That desire, very clear to me, exists today. Uh, you, you hear it in young people asking what it takes to get into politics, you exist in what I can do for this, what I can do for that, uh, what cause I can engage with. 
in our way, you know, we've started programs that are using volunteers as a tool. Other people are doing, you know, starting programs that, that are leveraging volunteerism as a tool. Once people see that as a success, it, it has a, a snowball effect. You know, you start seeing young people give to this, or young and old, young at heart, give to a particular issue. Other people ask, well, why are you going here? Can I do that too? They come as well. Uh, and then the city begins to see that, and other cities say, how come everybody in Delhi is volunteering in schools and we're not? That begins to happen as well. I think we're already well into that. I think it's already beginning. Um, so compassion hasn't dried out. The di <laughs> compassion hasn't dried up, but the appreciation of it, the societal appreciation of it, the societal push to say that we should be compassionate, we should be seen as a compassionate community, needs a bit of a, a kick in the butt. Uh, do you think our regulatory process uh, helps people to do voluntary work? Uh, and Want to, Manju, you want to say something? Yeah, I, can I just go back on this recognition bit which yeah. both Mr. Rajan and Anand has, have uh, spoken about? Um, Anu, you, uh, you know, I think the mindset of a lot of people have to change because there are a lot of good women who want to be teaching, who want to step out of their homes to teach but are not allowed to. In Haryana, uh, you know, the women are not allowed to go out and if you remember, I knew the first time the CIA gave that exa Women Exemplar Award to a lady who, 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 young girl who had been married a number of years, had, got, had been educated, but her, the, the, the family she got married into weren't very educated, and they didn't allow her to do anything, in, uh, you know, to help, uh, to help others. So slowly, you know, out of just um, sheer the thing, she started getting children at home and started teaching and that worked because more mothers would come to her and say, teach us and teach our children also. And, and we, uh, uh, we, we found out about this case, we gave, awarded her uh, by, by giving her that award. And next year she came back and the pride in the parents-in-law's face was amazing and so was in, in her husband. You know, the whole attitude had changed because here she was recognized for the effort she had put in which she was doing un un quiet, quietly, but when she was recognized by somebody in Delhi, that made all the difference. And I'm sure there are a lot of such cases where women want to step out help out with uh, volunteering, but are not able to do so because of restraint. But if it's their families uh, that they are coming in the way, India is a huge country. How do we, I'm talking of some concrete solutions which could change. How can we change the mindset of people, families who don't allow the women to go out and volunteer? How do we change? No, I think uh, TV is a, is a very uh, strong uh, media. media. Okay. Yeah, to have stories, you know, come, uh, you know keep on uh, showing stories of su such success, okay. I'm sure the mindset would also help, you know. Okay. That's one of the... Uh, yes, that is one. And another thing is we all have to fight against that uh, strict rule that it is 9 to 5 teaching, otherwise you don't enter yes. school. That one, unless that is not done, Okay, you, you generate an army here. We have to do a two-pronged attack. We have to change the mindset and doing all this. Simultaneously, the RTE or anything for that matter is done only when we change the thing, say that two, three, two hours, three hours. Or maybe one person will say, I am going to take only math or a history. With, with a little bit of an attitude, and change, that all can be easily organized. That has to simultaneously come. Government should do. Uh, say, okay, RT is there, all those rules are described, but they don't amend the uh, act. They can just say, however, in order to this, we are accepting volunteers to come in. Can that I just add, you know, the, the, the huge problem is of the migratory labor. Which, and the, those, their children get, um, uh, are not able to get educated. If one can work out a timetable calendar that when they are going to another village to work or going to another uh, state to uh, work, they need not, you know, that could be the holiday season for these children. And otherwise, when they are in their hometown, they should be allowed to teach. Otherwise, they are considered, you know, they, they don't uh, get education because they have not been, uh, you know, uh, able to attend the classes on a regular basis. But we need to be more, more flexible. Any particular suggestions you have for the government to change 
anything, rigidity, what else? You know, one of the things which I've been thinking of when um, I'm going to be speaking to the HRD minister about since there's a huge shortage, if we can do a three-month capsule for, for, you know, give the teachers, give, give the future teachers a three-month capsule of basic skills, put them in classrooms, and then after another three months when the summer vacation is on, give another capsule of training. And this way over a period of time work at, uh, you know, giving them the requisite skills. That would help in building a huge uh, pool of teachers which we require instead of that four, four year curriculum or whatever. Anil, any suggestion? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think something very similar, but I, the first to your question of what we can do, the first step is go volunteer. And the, the reason is because as people see more and more prominent people volunteering, other people will do so as well. The, the second question about what the government can do, it, it, to me it's all about entry barriers. If, if, if I have a bachelor's degree and I'm not qualified as a teacher, if there was a mechanism by which I could concurrently get my qualifications and spend some time teaching, a lot of people might open their doors and say, hey, I will go and be a teacher part-time during the day or full-time during the day because I can do this. There can be a requirement two years down the line, three years down the line, that once you've done this, you have to pass an exam that's a teacher certification exam of some kind. Maybe that's more regulation rather than less. But I mean, you do need to regulate who are teachers in schools. That's clear. However, you shouldn't make it so difficult that people who decide later than the age of you know, 12 that they want to be a teacher can't be a teacher. So, you know, I think some trust in civil society's interest in the good, which is to be willing to contribute to the education issue in whatever form, needs to be given by government regulation in the form that it's, it's on paper. And some entry for, for people who aren't lifelong people in the profession to be able to participate officially would go a very, very long way. That's exactly what we fight with. With Teach for India, you fight with simply the ability to have these kids be recognized as teachers in a school. For, for Teach India, it's to be able to have doors open so that people can come into the school. In Gandhi Fellows, it's to be able to have principals allow these folks with a letter from the government saying these people are coming as a government okay program to let them work with you. Some blanket regulation that made a call out to the public that said, come help your schools, come help the children in your community through education, we will make it possible for you, and was not encumbering, would, would go a very, very long way to changing the way so volunteers. So are you saying we need a process in place rather than person dependent? For example, in Pune, our two commissioners were very uh, encouraging for volunteerism, but the next one isn't. So it's very person dependent rather than a process laid down by which volunteerism can happen legitimately. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah?